Here come the only performers at Daytona Beach faster than the stock car. history have gathered to see the climax of two weeks of automotive safety and performance trials. Trials which saw nearly every stock car performance record smashed. In salute, the Air Force crashes the sound barrier as racing stock cars prepare once more to smash records on the sands of Daytona. Sands of Daytona, the world's most famous beach. Fifty weeks a year, this Florida resort town basks in sunshine and listens to the quiet sounds of the surf. Its rhythm is the ceaseless changing of the tides every 12 hours. The Atlantic scours the wide, smooth beach with the pressure of a million tons of water and suspended sand. At high tide, the sand is dropped before the surf retreats. The cycle repeats through countless sunsets. And sunrises. The Atlantic falls back. The sand dries and becomes a great natural superhighway, 200 feet wide, 20 miles long. 50 weeks each year, the cycle is undisturbed. Then, one day, as the surf falls back, men can be seen resetting old markers, laying cable, measuring carefully from one cable to another. Exactly one mile. Against this mile, men and machines are measured. Each year, the automakers, drivers, and mechanics challenge the old records with new speed, new performance, new acceleration. For 14 days, every major American stock car and many European manufacturers will race the clock in flying mile and acceleration tests. When time trials are over, these stock cars will compete against each other on the famous four-mile beach and road course, all supervised by NASCAR, the National Association for Stock Cars. But first, attention centers on the flying mile test for Class 5, Ford, Plymouth, and Chevrolet. All cars in showroom condition. Nothing altered. Strictly stock. There's Paul Goldsmith at the starting line. His V8 Chevrolet tuned by Smokey Yunick. Daytona garage owner and top mechanic. He has a two mile run to gather speed before hitting the time track. Goldsmith's southbound run is 138.2 miles an hour. 
A steady stream of Fords, Plymouths, and Chevrolets roars south on the beach, then turn. It has to be a two-way run to be official. Goldsmith, heading into the wind, hurdles north. His two-way average, 131 miles an hour. Goldsmith tops class five. The heavyweights now. Class six for bigger cars. Pontiac, Mercury, Oldsmobile, Buick. The hard-packed sand is right for running. And spectators are dazzled by the showroom equipment. At the starting line, a Pontiac brought to Daytona by a young man who's already set the racing world on its ear by owning the cars which won the last two Indianapolis 500-mile classics. John Zink, who usually hires professional drivers, is testing it out himself in a one-way, unofficial run. There go all the marks for all classes, 141.2 miles an hour. The fastest time ever recorded on this beach by an American passenger car. Now, official Class 6 records. Joe Littlejohn's Pontiac begins a two-way run. He averages 131.7 miles an hour. Fastest official Class 6 time. Jim Stonebreaker away. His Pontiac roars into the record book 128 miles an hour. Second fastest Class 6 time. L.D. Morris, a doctor who brought his Pontiac straight from the showroom in Mount Carmel, Illinois, travels 128 miles an hour, third fastest. The sand barrier has been broken, but at 130 miles an hour, anything can happen. Almost invisible ripples in the sand set up shock waves that torture suspension and steering. Look out! Bill Norcott is trapped in the wreck. His seatbelt held, and rescue workers must cut him loose. He's on his feet, walking away. That car was traveling better than 130 miles an hour when it went out of control. The beach is closed for the day. All other cars flagged out of the trap that nearly caught Bill Norton. When flying mile runs are completed, the measured mile is ready for acceleration tests for all classes. Accelerating from a standing start through a full mile run is a tough performance test for any car. Ray Nichols, chief mechanic for two Pontiac entries, waits his turn with Pat O'Connor, famed Indianapolis racing driver. O'Connor's visiting here, watching stock cars perform. Class 7, engines 350 cubic inches and over. Brewster Shaw in the Chrysler 300C accelerates from a standing start through the measured mile to average 86.8 miles an hour, breaking his own record of a year ago. The go signal for Class 6. Stonebreaker, in a Pontiac, roars away to average 85 miles an hour, first in his class. Joe Littlejohn, in another Pontiac, averages 84 miles an hour, second fastest. When time trials end, 30 new marks are in the record books. Attention switches now to the official inspection station. First stop for the Grand National Contenders. This is the first competitive event for the new models, and inspection will be as rigid as ever. Before any stock car is allowed on the beach to qualify for the race, it must be certified stock by NASCAR inspectors. Only modifications to promote driver safety are permitted, but no car may come to the starting line unless every part 
meet specifications issued at the beginning of each model year by the manufacturer and is in production for sale to the general public. Micrometer inspection assures the contestants and public that these are truly stock automobiles. After approval, NASCAR inspectors seal each engine and transmission. These seals must be intact after the race is over. race day approaches, Daytona shifts into high gear. Thousands of race fans pour in. Motels along the 23-mile beach drive hang out the sorry, no vacancy signs. The only empty beds belong to mechanics who work around the clock getting the cars ready for the big race. Some teams have come 3,000 miles from California bringing cars on giant haulaways. Other competitors have brought a fleet of cars and four tons of spare parts. Headquarters off the beach is often a local service station or dealer. All a mechanic wants is a good car and time to tune it. But at last, time runs out. Tiny Worley, co-mechanic on the Pontiac team, has done all he can. Now, it's up to the car. Back to the beach, ready to qualify these high-performance machines. Fastest qualifying speed earns a starting position at the head of the pack. But you're competing against the best. Superchargers, multiple carburetors, fuel injection, and the best drivers in the business. Curtis Turner, a Ford. hundred and eighteen miles an hour. Paul Goldsmith, Chevrolet. A hundred and twenty three point four miles an hour. Daryl Derringer, a Pontiac, tuned by John Zink's crew. Zink himself checks the official timing. 130.8 miles an hour. Cotton Owens in one of Ray Nichols' Pontiacs. A 132.1 miles an hour. Banjo Matthews, the other Nichols Pontiac. and 34.3, fastest of them all. They're ready to race. The pace lap of the Grand National Beach and Road Race. This 160 mile event will give a car more punishment in one afternoon than three years driving on the highway. These cars and drivers must go all out to win. 57 high-performance stock cars parade down the two-mile-long beach straightaway, then wheel into the north turn. Lined up in the order of qualifying speed, Banjo Matthews Pontiac at the pole position, inside front row. Jack Smith's Chevrolet next to him. Cotton Owens Pontiac in the second row, running next to Ponty Fox Mercury. Tiny Lund's Oldsmobile in the third row, next to the Zink Pontiac with Derringer at the wheel. Now, they move down the backstretch, a two-lane asphalt road that will know speeds of 140 miles an hour before the day's over. The Grand National, the Grand Challenge for endurance, for performance, for roadability. Here they come. The green flag, the race is on. Through the south turn, Banjo Matthews in Pontiac number eight, first car off the turn, booming down the beach straightaway. The pace car gets out of the way as Matthews shows his speed. The field strings out as Banjo Matthews sends his Pontiac screaming north at 140 miles an hour. But there's a challenge. Cotton Owens in number six Pontiac moves into second place. 
He's passing. Number six grabs the lead. Stretch Pontiac number 85 moves into second place. Uh oh, trouble on the south turn. Bob Duell runs his Ford up the bank and out of the race. The leaders hit the beach together. Pontiac's running one, two, three. And that's okay with mechanic Nichols. Owens in number six, putting a lot of beach between himself and the second place car. Look at him go! Coming fast through the pack from 20th starting position, Paul Goldsmith Chevrolet. Owens leads the way, but as they come back on the beach, number 85 closes in. Uh oh, there's a spin, and another! Number 85 slams into the spinning car. That's all the racing he'll do today. Another car in trouble. Paul Goldsmith coming through. Just look at that man drive! Tiny Whirly stopwatches show Goldsmith is gaining one and a half seconds each lap. Pocket radios tuned to the race broadcast keep the Pontiac crew informed. Owens Pontiac is meeting the challenge, lapping the field at an average speed of 106 miles an hour, a new record. Goldsmith moves up to second place. puts his Mercury into third place. Fireball Roberts in Ford number 22 goes high, wide, and handsome to move up a notch. Goldsmith is closing in. Straight away at 146 miles an hour. Fender to the fender. Look out! Fast cars coming through. Goldsmith moves into the lead. Bonnie Flock heads for his pit. That crew has to work fast. Time spent in the pits is counted against the driver and split seconds count. The engine is checked, gas tank filled, and Fonty is ready to roll in 30 seconds. That's some service station. The Pontiac crew signal Owens to a pit stop. Owens in number six has taken back a split second lead from Goldsmith number three. Lem's Fajan in trouble. He forgets the race driver's first rule. When you get to the end of the straightaway, turn left. Hey, where is everybody? Owens roars into the pits. After 90 record-shattering miles, only 12 seconds ahead of Goldsmith. Precious seconds are slipping away as Goldsmith roars down the beach into the lead. Seventy one seconds and on his way, second place. goes all out, mashing the accelerator to the floorboard, 
to make up time. Goldsmith leads, giving his car a jolting ride to stay in front. Owens, two-time winner at Daytona, knows the beach like the back of his hand. His car responds beautifully as he roars through the north turn, 40 seconds behind. Goldsmith Chevrolet will have to pit soon. The old pro, Fonty Flock, makes those years of racing experience work. He's only 13 seconds behind Owens. Goldsmith, still in the lead, heads to his pit for fuel and a mechanical check. He's been giving that car a bone-shaking ride. Owens is racing against the clock. And mechanic Nichols wonders, if these cars can stand this pace, they'll stand anything. Only 16 laps to go. Goldsmith back in the race after a 44-second pit stop. Here comes Owens, still 18 seconds behind. Smith is trying to open his lead, but Owens Pontiac responds to his touch and is keeping up the pressure on the front runner. Goldsmith is fast, but Owens is narrowing the gap. 35 miles to go. It looks like a race right down to the checkered flag. like Goldsmith might be in trouble. Owen sets his sights on the trail of blue-gray smoke down the backstretch. Goldsmith is losing speed. Where's Goldsmith? The stopwatches show he must be slowing down. Goldsmith limps to his pit. He may be out of the race. Owens in number six Pontiac takes first place. Smokey Yunick lifts the hood. Goldsmith's burned a piston. Maury Rose, famed Indianapolis winner, breaks the news to Goldsmith. Only a sportsman can take this much disappointment with a smile. But Bill Strop, Mercury team manager, isn't ready to concede anything yet. Fonty Flock in position three might be able to close the gap. Smooth and steady, Flock finds the easy way around. He's been in enough races to know that the leaders can burn themselves out in the last few laps. Fireball Robert shows the form and style which makes him a threat in any race. Ray Nichols lets Owens know he's safe. He's signaling to ease off. But Owens isn't through racing. He's going the distance at top speed. His average speed is better than 101 miles an hour. And his Pontiac is responding magnificently to every demand. Owens' skill and the car's response makes cornering a beautiful sight. This car was built for the road. One lap to go. Here's real sportsmanship at Daytona as one master mechanic congratulates another. Cotton Owens is completing the last lap.
of General Motors as Mr. S. E. Knudsen, General Manager of the Pontiac Division, looks on. Cotton Owens, stock car racing's answer to jet planes. His new record will stand through the year as a challenge to all who face the sand barrier.